Hi! This video is intended to teach you about some common lab equipment. Just kidding, we'll start with only vernier calipers. That's this entire video. Here is a vernier calipers. Is it a caliper? I think it's a caliper. Although this is a scissors. Are they a scissors? Dang, I get confused. Here's the point. This sucker is gonna enable us to measure distance incredibly accurately. In fact, there's a scale down here, and just like an ordinary distance measuring device, I'm able to measure one centimeter, two centimeters, three centimeters, four centimeters. It has three functions. One of them is to measure the space in between these two slicey blades right here. See that? Uh-huh. And the other one is to measure the distance between that point and that point. And guess what? The distance between that point and that point is the same as the distance between those two blades right there. The third function is to measure the depth of this plunger right here. See, the plunger comes out when I make that sliding motion right there, and the depth of that plunger is exactly the same as the separation between those two and the separation between those two. So this is for outside measurements, this is for inside measurements, and that's for depth measurements. It's a really handy tool, and you'll read the same distance for all three of those experiments, assuming the distances that you're reading are the same. So. Here's how it works. It is much, much nicer than a typical ruler because a typical ruler, you would look at something like, uh, let's just generate some distance right there. There, I'll just generate that guy right there. And when I look at this, I would say, well, it looks to be a little bit more than two centimeters but you wouldn't be able to be any more precise than that. You might say it's just slightly more than two centimeters, but that's not very convincing in a scientific journal. It's just barely more than two centimeters? No, that's not much of an improvement either. So what I did is I took a photograph of this at some random location. And here's a picture of the Rainier caliper zoomed in a tiny bit and clear so that I'm sure that you don't have any glare issues. What we'll do first is we'll conclude that when the zero is at zero, that is, when this sucker is closed, I'm able to see that the zero lines up with the zero. First of all, let's disregard this top one because it's actually in inches, and nobody likes inches anymore. They are a terrible, archaic measurement system. I call it the British Imperial System, and the British don't even use it! Guess what, America? It's time to move on. So. Down here, we're gonna be measuring in centimeters, so our answer is going to be in centimeters, and you can confirm that with putting an ordinary ruler on there. And just uh, so you know, it's between zero and 15 centimeters, and it's legit, it's very good, very good. And um, what I'll do next is I'll point out that if I move, you see, there's this edge here, and sometimes students get confused. Is it the edge that's measuring the location, or is it the zero that's measuring the location? Of course, it is the zero that's measuring the location, and you see that that edge right here is quite to the left of zero, and not important. What's important is where they've located that scale, and they've drilled these holes very precisely, so that it is an incredibly accurate um, bit of experimental apparatus. So I can move this a little bit to the right, and let's investigate this particular one. I think uh, it's something like, let's see, it's a little bit more than 1.7 centimeters. See that? It's a little bit more than 1.7 centimeters. So that's actually how I begin. I write the distance is 1.7, and then I put the units over here, centimeters, and the vernier action is this scale right here, which you'll see doesn't quite line up with the scale on top. I'm comparing these spacings with those spacings. And I notice that these don't line up except at a particular point. Now, you can look at these and say they definitely don't line up here, and you can say they definitely don't line up here, so you can zoom in on somewhere in the middle that they do line up. Uh, somewhere around there, they do line up. So let's try to get where they exactly line up, and I would say the very closest that they line up is actually right here. I'm gonna argue that right there is where they line up. And now my students sometimes struggle, do I write down 5.2? Because that's this side, that says 5.2, and uh, well, the other option is that I write down 4.3, because that's what it says up here. So what do you think? Are we gonna be writing down 5.2 or 4.3? We're gonna add to 1.7 centimeters, right? And we're adding the next two decimal points. In fact, those next two decimal points are going to be, well, not 4.3, because that would be what we would use. We're actually only using this scale when we're looking at the location of our zero. 
That already gave us the 1.7. Now we're using the lower scale. So do not write down 4.3. Write down 5.2. 5, 2. five two. So this, when I had it spaced space like that, I got a number that was 1.752 centimeters. Dang, that's incredibly accurate. That is really incredibly accurate. This is millimeters, that's hundredths of millimeters, and that's, well, no, tenths of millimeters, sorry, and that's hundredths of millimeters right there. So that's a very, very accurate tool. And uh, from here on out, I'm going to be measuring things, and um, you can stick with me as you see a couple examples and stop whenever you would like. I have just one more thing before we get into that. This guy right here, I sliced the picture, and I wanted to show you that we could move this to any old location. First of all, if I put it at zero, zero, then it exactly lines up. Check this out. Those dots exactly line up at zero. And they don't line up anywhere else. Like they're way off at five, at seven, etc. But if I move it over here to like um, halfway through, see I put my zero at just about halfway point. Just about halfway between 1.0 centimeters and 1.1 centimeters. So I'm hoping that it's going to be something like 1.05 centimeters. So let's see where the vernier scale, that's this one down here, lines up. Notice it does not line up over here and it does not line up over there, but it lines up pretty close in the middle. I would say that the best lining up occurs right there. And I look at this lower scale and it looks like it's 5.8. 5.8, so I put in 1.058 centimeters and my try to get it exactly lined up at 1.05 centimeters wasn't perfect, but that gives you the idea. If I move it just a little bit, the place where these lines up moves a ton. That's the beauty of the veneer. It magnifies the error for us. Okay. Let's do a few examples and you can stop whenever you like. The first one I always like to do in class is find a sleeping cat and measure the distance between its ears. This one must be done very quietly. And you have to be gentle lest the cat wake up. Check this out. I've got a, I've got a, um, I've got a measurement. So I'm going to look here, this is cat, ear width, and I find the cat's ear width to be more than four point, let's see, I'm looking for that zero, 4.6 centimeters, and I'm gonna get two more digits, and those digits come where these line up, and I find them to line up, and this can be a matter of judgment, you're always off by a tiny bit in these sorts of things. I think it lines up the very best at 4.8. See that right there? That's. 4.8 centimeters is the width of a cat's ears. And uh, let's do something else. Let's say you wanted to measure the um, spark plug spacing. Sure. What's the gap of the spark plug? And we'll slide this. We got the slider right here. I'm going to try to get in there. Excellent. Now I take it out here and I can measure the width of the spark plug. It seems like my spark gap right now is, wait for it. Well, it's zero centimeters, I'm looking at the zero. It's zero, it's almost 0 0.2 centimeters, but it's 0 0.1 and some change, and now I'll find out where this next one lines up. It lines up expectedly kind of high on the scale, and I find it to be really pretty good at 8.0, oh, no, maybe even better at 7.8. Seven, eight centimeters. So I could then check the manual for the car and see if that's the right spark gap and move it around. Of course, there are nicer tools for measuring the spark gap, but this is totally ready to do it if we'd like. Um, I was also thinking that we could measure how far that hole goes into this speaker. See, it's a computer speaker. And so I'll take this and plunge it into the middle of it. And when it stops, I'll say, okay, that's cool. So neat thing is you can measure things you can't even see with a veneer caliper. So that's the plunge distance, but I'll read it off on the same scale. And, um, uh -huh. speaker depth, we'll call it. Uh, remember, you can stop at any time. As soon as you get this, I want you to stop watching this video because I'm boring myself even. This is a little bit more than 8.4. So it's 8.4 something centimeters. Let's get those next two digits. 
it lines up, oh yeah, as expected, really close to zero. Looks to me like it lines up at 0 0.8. So I'm gonna write down 0 0.8 centimeters. That's how deep the speaker is, 8.408 centimeters. Lovely. Uh, if you happen to have a jar full of mercury on which a, uh, I guess I sealed that pretty tightly. Mm -hmm. On which a nickel is floating, yeah, there's a jar full of mercury. You want to measure the interior spacing of that mercury jar. That's the number right there. And then you should always close a jar full of mercury when you're finished working with it. Or else you'll go mad. Mm hmm And don't pass this around in a classroom because everyone might go mad. There we go. That's excellent. Now, mercury jar opening. Ew! This marker's really bad. Listen, if you're sticking around because you think something's funny going to be at the end, it's not. You just leave. There's not going to be anything interesting that's ever going to happen here. This is a little bit less than four centimeters. I see it at 3.9 and some change centimeters. Let's find out what those next two digits are. I see those next two digits at uh, five, two. Yeah, five, two. 5.2 centimeters. Cool, you see where the lines line up? Yeah, that's 5.2. Okay. Then um, you might also want to measure the width of an LED, like this one right here. Uh huh. We'll use that right there so that we can measure a cylinder really accurately because I don't get much air if I'm leaning from side to side. I try to be just about flat. Anyway, that's my favorite LED. That's an ultraviolet LED, and the cool thing is you can't tell when it's on. <laughs> U-V-L-E-D is, well, <clears throat> oh man. Now this is really close to half a centimeter, but it's not quite there. I get 0 0.4, <clears throat> and I'm gonna try to find out where these guys line up. It looks like they line up at 8.6. 0 0.486 centimeters. Whoa, 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 0 0.486 centimeters. I do wanna point out one thing, and that is that my last digit is always um, an even number, and that's probably because I just can't be precise enough to, so this digit isn't, isn't entirely precise. It's uh, got an error of one, at least, in that final digit right there. And then convert to meters and you're good to go. Should I measure more things? I don't know, yeah, here, look at my finger, great. Da, 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 da. Well, you don't know. see the problem with a finger is you can kind of cut it as much as you want. Like, let's go in here and just, there, that's the absolute minimum width of my finger there. And I'm finding that to be, I'm looking for the zero. It's um, 1.6 uh, go away. Are you still watching me? Well, it looks like it's pretty good there. 1.620 centimeters. Cool. But what about the maximum width of my finger? Uh, ow. <laughs> yeah. All right there. Oh, we could size my wedding ring. That'd be fun. No, just kidding. Then, so I want to just barely be contacting both sides. Great. And that, wow, this is minimum. And the maximum is gonna come out to be 2.0. What, that last digit? See, it's almost 2.1, so I'm gonna be looking kind of over on this side of the scale. 2.086. Great, bye.